So we previously have learned about oxygenic photosynthesis, which is what is shown up here in this top bit of this slide. So when you think about oxygenic photosynthesis, what else do you think of? What kinds of cells can do oxygenic photosynthesis? So cyanobacteria, which is mostly what we'll talk about since they are prokaryotes, but also land plants. Uh, what is the primary pigment needed for oxygenic photosynthesis? Chlorophyll. Um, what is the initial electron donor for oxygenic photosynthesis is water, and when that water is oxidized and its electron goes out, um, the oxygen is released. Uh, how is ATP made? ATP is made by photophosphorylation, uh, which similar to oxidative phosphorylation is going to happen in the membrane. It's done by ATP synthase and is powered by a PMF, uh, but the PMF is from light energy instead of from chemical energy. And then the last thing that we have to ask is where do we get the NADPH, right? So we will need NADPH l later for anabolic reactions. So we're going to be specifically looking for that in each of these different photosynthesis processes. And so NADPH is made using forward electron transport powered directly by light. Okay. And so again, in this diagram, we have our reaction center chlorophyll here surrounded by all of these different antenna pigments. I'm going to zoom way in on this so that you guys can see um, inside of the reaction center pigments in the, chlor in the reaction center chlorophyll in the photosystem are these little numbers, P680 and P700. So each reaction center has a slightly different wavelength um, absorbance optimum, and that is what these numbers mean. You do not need to know these. But I wanted to tell you what they were so that you could feel free to ignore them and not worry if they were important. We will not use them. Okay, so um, the light shines on the initial photosystem. The light is collected by the antenna pigments, which then transfer energy to the reaction center. The electron is energized, goes down an electron transport chain where it makes PMF to another photosystem where the antenna pigments will help to collect energy, transfer it to the reaction center pigment, um, then that electron or electrons are energized. Those electrons will go through a shorter electron transport chain, ending up at, oh, off the slide, sorry, ending up at NADPH. Um, you'll notice that this electron transport chain does not say anything about PMF, this chain may or may not produce PMF depending on um, the specific identity of the electron transport chain components, but it often does not. So that's why it's not written here. Okay, so this is oxygenic light dependent photosynthesis. The process of making ATP from light energy is called photophosphorylation. Um, so because bacteria live pretty much everywhere, there are different bacteria that can make energy in different ways. And so, of course, oxygenic photosynthesis is not the only photosynthetic option for bacteria. So other types of bacteria that are not cyanobacteria, right? Cyanobacteria, oxygenic, always. Other types of bacteria do a type of photosynthesis called anoxygenic. So anoxygenic photosynthesis does not produce oxygen. This can be for one of two reasons. Reason number one is because the process is cyclic, right? So here starts the electron, light shines. The electron gets energized, goes through an electron transport, and comes straight back to the photosystem. So there is no need for an external electron donor here, um, specifically for this electron because um, the electron comes right back. And so no water is used, so no oxygen is produced. 
So anoxygenic can be cyclic. Anoxygenic can also be acyclic, which means non-cyclic. Um, if the electron does not come back to the photosystem and there is a second electron donor, but in that case, of course, that electron donor is not water, and so the waste, the quote-unquote waste product that is produced is still not going to be oxygen. Um, so in this video, we're going to learn more about anoxygenic photosynthesis. Okay, so our first option for that is best exemplified by a type of bacteria called the purple non-sulfur bacteria. These guys look purple when you see them. Uh, and so this is a diagram depicting what happens. This is the reduction potential chart over here, right? So things with negative values are better electron donors. Things with positive values are better electron acceptors. Here is our photosystem. And so light shines on the photosystem. The antenna or light harvesting pigments help to collect the energy, shuffle that energy to the reaction center pigment. Okay, since we are doing anoxygenic photosynthesis, what is our primary photosynthetic pigment? We have changed and it is now bacteriochlorophyll, which you can abbreviate that, BCHL, or you can write out the whole thing, either way. Um, so this photosystem has a reaction center with two bacteria chlorophyll molecules. So the light shines, works the same way, light harvesting passed to the reaction center, except now the reaction center is bacteria chlorophyll, and then the electrons get energized to this um, high energy state. They go through an electron transport chain, happens in the membrane, generates PMF, just like normal. Then the electron actually returns back to the same photosystem where it came from, okay? So in this process, we have generated PMF. Uh, that PM, I don't know why that says ATPA, so I feel like that's confusing. So that PMF is used um, along with ATP synthase, also located in the membrane, to produce ATP through what process? Through photophosphorylation. All right, so we need two things in order to eventually build sugar, right? We're gonna need the energy to connect the carbons from CO2 together into glucose, but we also will need electrons to make those new bonds. So whenever the cell is building something in an anabolic process, it is gonna need energy and it's gonna need electrons. And so we have the energy right here, no problem. But what you clearly do not see in this picture is the making of the NADPH. Um, so you'll remember that NADPH is the anabolic electron carrier that is typically used to donate electrons to build bonds. So what did we do the last time that we learned about an electron transport chain that made PMF but did not make NADPH. This is in the chemolithotrose. Do you guys remember that? They have like the forked electron transport chain, right? So this is not forked, but it's kind of the same. So this is the previous slide, right? So we have light shines, energy, electron is energized through electron transport, makes PMF normal. Um, but then we still need to make NADPH. NADPH is going to be required for anabolism, but our normal electron transport chain does not make that, so we use reverse electron transport, which is what we learned before, where our external electron donor, which can be anything except not water, not water, because we're not making oxygen here, remember? So our external electron donor is going to um, get energy from PMF exactly the same as in chemolithotrophs to push the electron up to NADPH. And so in anoxygen, I think I might have a slide for this. In anoxygenic photosynthesis, using the purple non-sulfur bacteria, 
we have a cyclic electron flow which makes PMF. So cyclic electron flow makes PMF. That is all that it makes. This PMF is powered by light. Let me zoom in a weensy bit so you guys can see slightly better. Okay, so the cyclic electron transport does not make NADPH. So these cells, just like the chemolithotrophs, need to make the NADPH through a reverse electron transport process. Um, this reverse electron transport is powered by PMF. So this PMF came initially from light. Um, it can sometimes come from breaking down an ATP, but usually comes from light. Um, but very importantly, so let me see if I can fish back the oxygenic photosynthesis picture here for a second. So this NADPH is made directly from light energy, whereas this NADPH, hang on one second, um, is made secondarily from light energy by way of being powered directly by the PMF. So this is a slight difference between the purple non-sulfur bacteria and the cyanobacteria. It's how we get the NADPH. Okay. Do not be surprised if there is some question on the test, multiple choice or essay, um, asking you what process the anoxygenic cyclic bacteria and the chemolithotrophs have in common, you will all immediately write reverse electron transport powered by PMF to make NADPH, which is up on the middle of the um, reduction potential chart. And you'll draw me a little like up arrow with energy input. You guys will be great at that. Okay, so that was purple non-sulfur bacteria. They had the cyclic electron flow. The second option to be anoxygenic is exemplified by something called the green sulfur bacteria. And um, what they do is actually super interesting. So they also only have one photosystem. So the, let me just show you this for a second again, right? So the oxygenic photosynthesis organisms, the cyanobacteria and plants have two photosystems. All of the anoxygenic ones, either the purple non-sulfur or the green sulfur, have only one photosystem. So that's another difference. So back to the green sulfur bacteria. So here is their photosystem. What is the primary pigment in the reaction center of this photosystem, I ask you? If it is anoxygenic, that pigment is bacteriochlorophyll. It is not just chlorophyll. So the light shines, um, the energy is passed to the reaction center bacteria chlorophyll, the electron is energized, goes through an electron transport chain, makes a PMF, which can make ATP, standard. The thing that is different here is partway down the electron transport chain, there is a fork. And so if there is NAD plus or NADP plus, available, then the electron will go there and the electron will be replaced to the bacteria chlorophyll using either hydrogen sulfide um, or this other sulfur compound. And so if there is not NAD plus or NADP plus, then the electron will return in a cyclic fashion directly to the bacteria chlorophyll. So in the green sulfur bacteria, there's still one photosystem, but there is this branch point where the electron transport can be either non-cyclic to directly make NADPH powered by light, or the electron transport chain can be cyclic. Um, very importantly, because of this branch point, there is no reverse electron transport chain. It's simply not needed in these organisms, okay? So here is the recap slide. Um, in the green sulfur bacteria, the ones that we just looked at, they're the ones with the branched electron transport chain where the electron's destiny depends on the availability of the NADP plus or the NAD plus. And so these electrons can either have a cyclic or a non-electron flow. 
where they either go down the electron transport chain to NADPH if it is to NADP plus if it is available or not if it's not. Um, in either case, the electron transport chain generates a PMF ultimately powered by light. The NADPH that is produced is also produced directly through a light powered electron transport chain and is not made through a PMF powered reverse electron transport. So that's the big difference. Um, okay, there's one other special case here that I need to tell you about. Okay, so you guys remember that we talked about photosynthesis must use either chlorophyll or bacteria chlorophyll and then has the light come down and the reaction center and the electron transport chain and the whole business. So there are some bacterial organisms, some things that used to be called bacteria but are now called archaea. There are some prokaryotes uh, that do what is called phototrophy. So phototrophy is when a pigment, not one of the two primary pigments, is used to harvest light energy to make a PMF, um, but there's no primary pigment and there's no electron transport chain. That is called phototrophy. So this is the way that it happens. This is an example um, of the most famous organism that does this is called Halobacterium salinarium, and it will turn um, salt lakes this super awesome red color. So what happens is in the membrane, right, we're still making a PMF, so this has to happen in the membrane. PMF generating things always in the membrane. Also PMF using things in the membrane. Because PMF, right, is more protons on the outside of the membrane. So without the membrane, this whole thing is moved. Moving on. So here is the membrane. Um, and it says inner membrane because this is like compared to the outer membrane in gram negatives. This does not mean that it's in the mitochondria. So here is a pigment which is not chlorophyll or bacteria chlorophyll. So this is a pigment. It is able to absorb light energy, but it's not a primary pigment. So we're not doing photosynthesis. We are doing something called phototrophy. So the light absorbs, the light absorbs, the pigment absorbs the light and then it flips. Bing, 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 bing. When it flips, it just flips protons out. Flip, flip, flip. And so as this pigment absorbs light and flips these protons out, a PMF is generated, but there is no primary photosynthetic pigment and there is no electron transport chain. So this does not count as photosynthesis, even though it is using light to make a PMF. So if I ask you a question like this, is Halobacterium selenarum photosynthetic? you will definitely pick no, because it does not have one of the two primary photosynthetic pigments, chlorophyll or bacterial chlorophyll, and those pigments are an absolute necessity for something to be called photosynthetic.